different between vibration and rubbing? What do we know? What's rubbing? I'm hearing it. I'm hearing it. Keep friction going. across the skin. Keep going. So it's that kind of friction. We have. We really confuse ourselves with the words because you're right. Rubbing is that friction across the skin, and then we talk about friction being more like a compression, right? Okay. Don't we make life difficult? So, <laughs> so when we rub, of course we friction the skin. What's the difference between that? Because that works the skin gets you nice and warm, doesn't it? Yeah? Superficially. What's the difference between that and a vibration technique? Come on, do it for me and then I'll hear. Oh, yes, that's perfect. See, I don't hear that rub? Right? Okay, so with vibration, what you're actually doing is engaging with the tissues and shaking the actual tissues, vibrating the tissues. Yeah? As opposed to rubbing across. Good, lovely stuff. Huh? Okay, so we're going to do lots of different types of rocking, oscillation, vibration. So by the end of this session, you should have a fairly good idea of what it is and how to adapt it a little bit. We'll start off with the back and then we'll work about in how we can use it in other areas. I want to mention um, different trainers that use the technique of kind of oscillating and rocking. So where this comes from. There's a guy called Milton Traeger and he developed the Traeger approach which kind of informs some of what we'll be doing today. In myofascial release they talk about rebounding. What does that word mean to you? Rebounding. Push yeah, you push and it comes back. Absolutely. Push and it comes back. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing with the rocking movements. So in, in myofascial technique, they talk about rebounding, but I'm not sure of the difference of what I've done before and what I did there. Okay? Um, there's a guy in uh, MTI who does a lot of uh, advanced courses, and that's Darian Pritchard, and he's coined the phrase rhythm mobility. So he's used mobility and rhythm in with the massage and stretching and mobilizing. So that's quite nice. And there's also, um, and I think you experienced it recently, pulsing, okay? Which was born out of more the uh, therapy side of things. Uh, so the uh, post Reichian bodywork therapy and pulsing would be used more in looking at the emotional release. You know, earlier we talked about um, you know, you can really work with the mind and the body at the same time if you talk about an area that's had trauma. Well, this would be one way of actually working with the body and releasing those traumas. It's very specifically much more of a therapy, a therapeutic body work. Okay? Okay. Uh, right, let me start. Um, oh, yeah. What do you think it's useful for? kind of said it, but let's kind of, what's it useful for? Hey? Preparing the body. So preparing the body in what way? Loosening up. Loosening. loosening. It's a loosening technique. It's a warming technique, so it's going to get that, that kinetic energy going. Anything else? So it's quite relaxing the going to be able to release the tension. Yeah, so it, it can be stimulating, invigorating, and it can be incredibly relaxing. So if you imagine it's a bit like the percussion. If you do a little bit of it, it can be quite stimulating. I can do a whole treatment with rhythm mobility, with movement and rocking and things like that, and stretching and mobilizing, and it is delightful. Okay, so it's definitely good for loosening, for mobilizing, for warming, for I use also vibration technique if I've done some compression work and I might use a little bit of vibration afterwards. It seems to help the body just accept some of that deeper work. I quite like that. You know how mothers tend to rub if, they, if, if their children have hurt themselves? It's a kind of, it's an instinctive thing. And I think it's actually useful in that way. You know, if you're hurt, a little bit of vibration. We're going to 
to do some big rocking stuff, and I know I haven't got a body here to show you, but we will in a second. But I wanted to talk to you a little bit about when wouldn't we do it? Yep. So injuries. Mm -hmm. So what we have to think about here is if we are moving these joints, are they safe to move? So if you're going to do rocking and someone has a lower back issue, sometimes that's going to be helpful, sometimes it's not. Mm -hmm. So, And some of the smaller oscillating vibration movements might be appropriate, but some of the gross movements might not. So if anyone here has any issues, we need to know about them. I have got a low back issue. I mean when you, when you work with somebody. <laughs> okay? Oh, because oh, yeah. you're working with me. Okay, I'll choose someone else. This. No, I'll choose someone else. So we need to be a little bit careful, particularly on a first time, and I want somebody I can really move. Okay, okay, I want someone I can really move. So any joint issues, we have to be a little bit cautious with. In any of this movement stuff, we only work in an easy way with the joints. So if there's resistance in the joint, you work with what's possible rather than what's not possible. We go from the point of ease and then hopefully when we work with the point of ease, then it begins to become possible to move within those more difficult areas, okay? So we don't push anything, we don't, well we do push. Sorry, <laughs> no. we do push, <laughs> but we don't push anything too far. Uh, okay. I think that's it. I think you can stop that, that was the first bit, just 